How's it going? Nice to see you. Yes, it's been a while. Well, yeah, I mean, when we first met, strangely, was was a long, long way from Montreal. Yeah, I remember that. Do you remember? Yeah, that was in the was in the UK. I remember because he took a picture, and we used them. We used that picture for a while. Yeah, remember that. I'm really surprised that you remember that. I was going to remind you of that, but I was like, there's no way. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, it's nice to see you again here in Montreal. Yeah. I think at the time it was, I think it was weeks before I moved to Montreal when um, when we met there. And, and I remember saying to you, oh yeah, I'm going to be moving to Montreal in a few weeks. And you said, whereabouts? And at the time I was moving to Chattagay. Chattagay. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And, and, and I think the whole band basically laughed in unison. <laughs> like, are why you, are you going there? Are you still in Shadowgate? No, we, uh, we only stayed there when we first moved until we found a house. Okay. And now we're in St. Lazar, which... Oh, nice. I, will, I don't want to upset anybody in Shattergate, but I prefer St. Lazar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's beautiful out there. Yeah. yeah I, think, I, think, I think Corey Hart lives there. Oh, yeah? I didn't yeah. know. That's fine. I just remember hearing that as a kid. So I'll keep my eye out. <laughs> I keep my eye out. My <laughs> so how's everything with you? Uh good. Yeah, I know it's uh yeah, things you know, it's like just waiting for all this COVID thing to be over. So yeah, well hopefully yeah. the end is in sight, I think. Yeah. Like, like, no I met up with the the band came over yesterday and we all we were like, okay. This felt because usually when we'd get together, we'd always be a bit on edge and be like, no COVID, are you okay? But yesterday was the first time we got together where we all felt a bit more relaxed together. So it's positive. And do you feel, are you in a place now with the band where you can start actually planning and thinking it's going to happen? I mean, I know you've got, you've got some dates planned. I know that. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. yeah. We're, <clears throat> we're, um, I mean, we're, we're just moving ahead with it. I mean, that's the thing with, this, the past two years, it's like I'm fine with things not going as planned. I'm used to that now. So I'm my whole thing is make, like you know hope for the best, plan for the worst. So yeah, we have South by Southwest, and just over a month we're going to go down. So and then we have a May tour, and then we're also looking for a European tour in September. So there, we have a lot of things on the go, and on, and the whole time we're working on new music. So that's good. Yeah, so you've got some new music coming out. This has been described as a love letter to Montreal and Quebec mm-hmm. and, and just French-speaking people yep. in general. Obviously, the lyrics are in French this time. Why now? Why now? Um, it's, I guess it's like Miles, my drummer and I, we've been talking about it for a while. You know, was, you know, he's, he's Francophone, and at one point, the majority of the band was Francophone. It was ex- except me. I'm like the one Anglophone. So it's always been on my radar that we should one day just try doing in French. We did one song off of ship of fools back in 2016, but uh, with COVID um, yeah, I don't know. It's like, uh, I was willing to take more chances, I guess the fact that I wasn't touring and I had more time to just develop things. Mm. And uh, I'm always working on new songs. And it just happened that when I was working on this new batch of songs, a few songs, well, usually how I write songs is I come up with a, a chord progression, a riff, and a melody. And the melody usually has like gibberish lyrics. And I'll be like, oh, but, oh, but, oh. but within these songs, my gibberish lyrics sounded like 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 someone who some someone who doesn't know French, but this that think that think that's this is what French sounds like. So I'm like, oh, it's <laughs> I was like, oh, it sounds like French. Maybe I should try this. And I was like, and then I started just listening to like a lot of like Jacques Citron and Sarah's Gainsbourg and stuff, and just like some old like yeah yeah stuff, and I was like, oh, this this could work. And uh, yeah, it was just like I'm like let's do this. And my buddy Felix Diaz, he's a Montreal musician. I ran into him, and he lives like two blocks away. And I'm like, oh, I'm like this is serendipity. I'm like, do you want to work on? Do you want to help me write a French album? So I had this whole storyline about Monsieur Lonely, and like. Mm-hmm. Get, and I had the demos I made. I gave it to Felix, and then Felix wrote all the lyrics in French and gave it to me, and then I ran with it. And how is it for you as a vocalist singing in in French compared to English? Is yeah, it was it was, it was it was it was interesting. I mean, it's like it was a lot of work just just to 
like luckily like my french conversational wise it's not that great but I, I i can get by but the good thing is i don't think my accent is terrible okay. so that worked to my favor and the mm-hmm. fact that i worked on it and it by the end it's funny in the end when i played it for my wife she, she's like it's funny you don't sound like you're an, like an english guy singing french you sound like you're like a like a like a spanish speaker speaking french you know it's like i have more of a thing spanish accent it's weird yeah it's just funny she pointed that out then i listened to it i'm like oh yeah it's a bit weird accent because the whole thing about singing in french and the french language it's like it's a great language and it sounds great and people want to hear the words whereas in english like people don't really care like you can kind of get by with mumbling your words and people think it's great i mean look at it smells like teen spirit right I had no that's idea. A classic what... example. I think. Yeah. I think Kurt actually said that he doesn't really care about the lyrics because nobody cares about lyrics. And yeah. And, and and that's a perfect example of that. And there's quite a few Nirvana songs where if you look at the lyrics, it's just like really. <laughs> yeah, and I remember as a kid hearing the song and I'm like, what is he saying? What's he? I have no idea what he's saying. But when it comes to French music, the words matter. And like, because they love it's a it's like a language of romance, right? So I really mm-hmm. had to like make sure I had to put a lot of focus this time on my vocals, which in the long run, it was a great thing because it just made me really dissect my singing a lot more than in past records. Okay. So you, you mentioned there that the French is the, the language of romance. And you also touched on this theme of Monsieur Lonely. Yep. So tell us a bit more about that theme and if there's any romance <laughs> involved in that. Well, I, I see this EP as an extension of our last record, Hollow. I mean, Hollow was about this catastrophic event that destroys Earth and then humanity looking to survive. But in the end, um, we destroy what we create and it's all very bleak. And so with this, the Miss and Lonely, it, it was more... It was more about... I guess it was like... the con- I, I had this idea for a song for for years like dating back 10 years or something this riff and an idea of what it could be but i guess with the pandemic and me being home all the time and never leaving the house this whole idea of mr lonely and i thought i I started thinking about all these people who are lonely and solitary and hermits and now everyone else is home as well and no one's connected and this person, I'm like, they had this idea of this person that wanted to escape this world where everyone is isolated and to truly be alone by himself on the moon, away from everything and everyone, humanity. And, and it's funny because my wife pointed out with this whole pandemic that it, it, like we always perceived each other as I was the extrovert, she was the introvert. And just by the fact that I'm a musician and going and touring and stuff. But then with everything that happened, I was actually quite happy being by myself at home all the time, just going in the studio, whereas she was longing to have that connection with other people. But I wasn't really needing that. And so she pointed that out. She's like, you're much more introverted than I am. I was like, it's true. And, I was like, and then so this miscellany idea came about. But ultimately, the, the storyline, I mean, he goes to the moon. And uh, there's something called like the overview effect that astronauts experience when they see the earth from the, from the shuttle or whatever. Okay. And they realize that everything they know is on this small blue dot kind of thing, you know, and, and they realize the fragility of earth. And so by Mr. Lonely being on the moon and seeing the earth, he realizes that he misses the imperfect earth and all of its imperfect people. So he returns to earth aboard his, the rock, that fusée du chagrin, the rock of sorrow, and he dies and he, he lives out his last years by himself but surrounded by mankind so. so that that could be like you could link that to people going through the pandemic and maybe appreciating what they had before oh definitely and then, yeah, yeah. And then living the rest of their life with a different viewpoint is that was that deliberate or is that i don't know i don't think anything i like it's for songwriting to me it's never really about one thing it's more about a feeling and what it 
it's hard it's hard to it's hard to say that it's really about that but i i i can't see why it cannot be about that because <laughs> it's what we live through and usually when i like even though I didn't write the lyrics for this. I did write the, it was my script storyline kind of thing. And so like this song is about this, this song is about that. And this song is about that. And then Felix took it and added his poetry to it, which was, that's the thing also about this exciting thing about this release is not only it's in French, but also lyrically is it's our, someone, someone's a different artistic viewpoint and contribution, which I think the lyrics are beautiful on this release. It's probably the best thing we've ever released lyrically. It's better than my lyrics. Um, but uh, yeah, no, but I, I could see that definitely. I mean, we, you, you really have to, you only appreciate something once you lose it or think you're going to lose it. And so that's what Mr. Lonely went through. And that's hopefully what we all went through. Yeah, for sure. And what about musically? Is it, do you see any kind of progression or change from what you've done before on this release? I guess starting with Hollow, because oh, uh, back in 2018, my wife and I bought a place and I, uh, I built a recording studio in the basement. And so for Hollow, I recorded it all in my studio and then I mixed it with my, my friend uh, Jace from Desmond Lakes. But with this release, it was me being home all the time and I did everything in my studio. I mixed it myself as well. And so the studio becomes an instrument in some ways, in many ways, like what I, and uh, that, de that definitely dictated how this EP turned out and how it sounded. I mean, musically it's, it, the songs are kind of all over the place, I guess, in some ways. I mean, a song like it, to me, it, to me, the music I make doesn't, it doesn't really ever feel that different, whether it's like a pop song or it's like more of kind of like a stoner rock thing or a sitar joint. It's all, it's just, it all fits into my vision of what this band is. So musically, I find the CP covers the gamut of what the band is. I mean, Miss Lonely is like this kind of garagey, proggy tune and then Fusée Chagné. Another, it's, it's all, it's all, actually, it's, it all, it's all very proggy. I was listening to a lot of... <laughs> I was listening to, I was listening to a lot of yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Pretty proggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I was getting, I'm, I'm, I'm very much in that world these days and uh, just kind of, uh, I mean, I'm putting out concept albums, so it's always about the storyline and movements. And uh, so definitely this thing, that's the thing with the EP. Uh, also why I want to release it on vinyl, just the fact that I felt like this is a cohesive thing. Uh, the artwork, I wanted to present it as though it's like a novel. So the designer I worked with, Juliana, I was like, I want it to look like this old like novel from like the 50s that someone picks up. So no, yeah. Uh, musically, it's, yeah, I mean, it's hard to say what, what it is. It's definitely Elephant Stones. It's just like, uh, I mean, we always have like on our last album, Hollow, I mean, we had a song like Land of Dead, which was like a metal song you know, something like Sabbath, Black Sabbath or something. So there's always going to be these weird moments. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things I love about your band is that you never really know what to expect. Like you can get very heavy, but then you can get very mellow and obviously the psychedelic side to what you do. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, bring in the instruments that you bring in makes it completely unique. I don't like, are there any bands that you can compare elephant stone to um i mean uh, the, i mean we're pretty unique in the fact that well what we do um i mean you know we're it's, we're I, I don't know i can't i can't say i can i mean there's so many bands that i love and that do amazing music but i think we're our own thing yeah for sure i mean i mean the sitar thing it's it's not just a it's gimmicky, but it's also not gimmicky because it's something that I've been playing for years and it's something that we web into our music in a non kitsch way. You know, it's not just like, Oh, here's this like exotic instrument. No, I'm like, no, it's, this is a serious thing. And it's actually part of the live show. It's even we've gone to the point now where I don't feel I need to have sitar all the time to have that kind of, essence because it, it the sitar does bring a, a w magical eastern element to it like on the new ep i don't think there's any sitar there was i think i did record sitar but i didn't make it on the mix but like a song like fusée du chagrin it's a very 
it goes places, but it's very droney at the same time. So with a strong melody, that's the thing. Cause I'm, I'm a sucker for melody. It has to always be about melody over anything well, over harmony it has to have a strong melodic structure to it. And I think that's what really I push in this band. So, I mean, I know there's a lot of psych bands out there that are very droney and they're all about the vibe and all that stuff, but they don't have the melody, the strong sense of melody. And that's something that I think that, I think that's what sets us apart from a lot yeah, of yeah. modern, a lot of modern music. It's so repetitive. Yeah. So. No, it's, it's, it's obviously a really good thing. If you can, if you struggle to think of other bands that are doing something similar, like mm-hmm. it almost feels like you could jump on different kinds of tours and you wouldn't be out of place. And have you found that over your career that you can do that? Oh, definitely. I mean, we've toured with the Black Angels. We've toured with the Zombies. So we've done with, like, <laughs> you know, we're all we're all in the same rock and roll world. But I mean, the Zombies, like, that was beautiful 60s pastoral music. Mm-hmm. And we were playing to, like, mostly seniors. seniors and I was, like, playing to seven-year-olds. And they loved us. Mm-hmm. And then we're playing with Black, with the Black Angels or... The Brian Jonestown Massacre crowd, or uh, else to be true, soundtrack of our lives. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, it's like I find, yeah, there's a lot to us to appreciate. I mean, we're 13 years into our the band's existence, so we've put a lot of music out. Yeah, and it's fun. It's fun being at this point. I can look back at my catalog and just kind of be like, uh, no two records were the same. I like that. So if somebody had never heard Elephant Stone, what record would you want them to start with? I think our 2013 release, Elephant Stone, the eponymous one. I mean, that one, that was the, that was the record. It was like, that was our third release, I think. We put out the Seven Seas, then we put the Glass Box EP, and then that album. And when that, that was the album where I was like, I know what I'm doing. Like, yeah. I know what this band is. And ever since then, I have been running with that. With Ship of Fools, I kind of shifted the band a bit more. I was getting more into synths, and I was listening to a lot more Daft Punk and stuff. So I was getting more into that world, and I tried it for that album. But then, you know, then we got back to what we used to do. So. Yeah. And do you worry that English-speaking fans might not be able to connect with this rec- this new EP? No, of- not at all. Not at all. I mean. I know how open-minded our music fans are and have, and the psychedelic music community. I remember, um, remember, do you know that band Dunyan from Sweden? I'm not sure I do. They're, it's D-U-N-G-E-N. Um, oh, yeah, Sweden. yeah, yeah. yeah. Do. Now, yeah. They, now they spell it, I reckon. <laughs> like, I remember when they came out with their record back in the early 2000s, it was in Swedish. And everyone I knew, we were freaking out over it just because we had no idea what they were saying, but it just sounded so cool. And I remember we just loved the music was so great. And that that's kind of what music is. It's, it's music is a language in itself. It doesn't matter what language you're speaking, people are going to connect with it. And that's what I'm I'm surprisingly I'm finding out. I'm finding that out. A lot of people in our in my team were saying, really, you want to do this in French? But why? Like you already have like it's falling. I'm like, I know, but why not? Like nothing's stopping us. We're from Montreal. We've got a strong French fan base here and in France as well. So I'm like, let's try something different and see what happens. And you've called this a love letter to kind of French speaking people. Mm -hmm. Is that just because it's French or is there more to it than that? Well, it was, it was, I intentionally did this, put this out for, our French fans. Like that was my thinking, like, why not give this, give something that shows how much I appreciate where, where we come from and where we've been. So it's, it's no, I mean, it's, it's a, not like it's a political statement at all by any means, but it's something to show that, you know, it, it, everything matters and everything's part of it. And you don't just have to just follow one path on what you're doing and just, yeah, I mean, it was just something fun to do as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was, a, it was, a, it was a challenge. It was a challenge and I enjoyed it. Yeah. That's good. And, and, and pushing yourself in different directions will then lead to something different 
further down the line, I would assume. Yeah, and yeah, and also it's like I got to collaborate with Felix on this, uh, on the writing of this, and um, lyrically, I was having a hard time. I think a big thing also, I was just having a like you know because we we had just put out Hollow, the album just came out, and then the pandemic hit, mm. and we're not touring anymore. I'm like, oh, okay, and then so I I, I tried writing songs and. I had I was having a hard time with lyrics, and and for this batch of songs, any English words, any English lyrics I was adding to it just didn't connect. Like the song really revealed itself to me and said, like you, you can't do this in English; it has to be in French. Interesting. It was like it spoke to me. It's like <laughs> so. If I yeah, if I if it was called Mister Lonely, it wouldn't work out that well. It has to be Monsieur Lonely. <laughs> And are there any new artists, like Montreal artists especially, that you're particularly excited about at the moment? Uh, uh, I don't really, well, I haven't seen a show in forever. <laughs> um, there's music wise, I mean, there's so much great music happening all the time, but I'm just, I mean, no, I mean, the last album that I'm excited about is Beach House, the new Beach House record, but they're from, they're from Baltimore. I just been yeah I mean I just been in my studio just working on new music all the time so it's not really paying attention much to what's out there. Okay. Yeah. So what's what's next for you guys like you've got the EP comes out next week and then you've got a few days planned uh, what else after that? Um we're going to be releasing a movie. I I, wow. I worked I worked on this I put together this uh, animated short film based on Hollow our last record. So I like I rescored I rescored the first six songs. Um, so it's like this 10 minute long soundtrack with orchestral arrangements. And I worked with an animator, Lorena Jusserin in Montreal, and we put made this film together, this animated film. So that's gonna come out, I think, after South by Southwest. And um, where, where will people be able to see that? Um I, I, Imagine it's, I think we're going to be screening it during our, our South by Southwest shows. And then we'll probably just, it'll probably be on YouTube. Okay. I guess we'll try to, uh, I, I don't know this world at all. Like we're talking about getting it into festivals and stuff, but I don't know how to do this. <laughs> so, <laughs> to me, it's just one long music video. Um, so we have that. And then the May tour is going to happen. And then we're supposed to, I just wrote a whole new record. I demoed a whole new record over the holidays. So the band, I booked studio time in June to, to start the new album. And then we're going to go to Europe in September. So, right. No, it's good. It's like, it's, it, it was at, like, it's been very prolific. Like the, the COVID, when it started off, um like i was when covid started i was doing um these like sacred sound sessions it was like live streaming from my studio i was doing performances for a while i put out a standalone single american dream so it started off and then i had to step back from the live streaming because it was sucking the soul out of me i hated doing it it was so much work for so little return <laughs> and, and that's when i wrote the ep so uh, but I was happy that I managed to write an album over the holidays. Like that was a big thing. Man, I just every, for two weeks in my studio, I've just spent eight hours writing and demoing. So it was fun. It was nice. Nice, exciting yeah. times. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's, it's very sustainable when I'm doing so. Great. Yeah. Well, I wish you all the best with the EP, and fingers crossed, all these dates are going to go ahead without any interruptions. Yeah, I mean, it looks it looks pretty good. I mean. We're getting there. And what about Montreal? Are you going to be playing back in Montreal? Yeah, well, we were supposed to. We had a Quebec tour booked for February, but it was still when we were under a lockdown, mm. the last lockdown. So all those dates got canceled. And But I actually played Montreal a lot last year. Yeah. I think, I think we, we were doing like all these live streaming and half, audi half audience, half live streaming. And I... I feel like I played much of like three, four times last year. So I'm kind of, I think we need to take a little break. People are asking us, but maybe in the fall, it'd be nice to play Montreal again once things are maybe, maybe pop around pop. I don't know. Maybe around pop Montreal. I'll have to think about yeah, it. Be, yeah, we'll that'd, see. That'd be a good time. I mean, if you, if you're not 
in Europe. So. Oh, I am in Europe September. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right. Well, good luck on all your travels and good luck with the EP. Thanks for uh, spending some time chatting with me. It's been nice to chat with you. Yeah, nice to see you again. And um, yeah, nice to see you again. And hopefully I'll see you in real life in a room somewhere at some yeah. point this year. Very soon. <laughs>